What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Review 4 to your Eternity Season 2. Um, what episode are we on again? I I, I think it's episode six. six. Yeah, it was six, okay. Yeah. And with me as always, I have uh, I have his blue spit. Yeah. So it seems that uh, I guess you could say we're getting somewhere with the plot. Um, Finally. Even after, uh, yeah, I, I guess so. Um, of of course, uh, not not before. Well, not before like uh, it's. You know, we get a continuation of that scene from the end of last week in which Ka <laughs> Kahaku, um, you know, of course, proposes to Fushi, which Fushi is a little bit hesitant at first because he doesn't know. He, he's, yeah, I mean, he, like, he doesn't know, like, how marriage or proposal works, but, you know, he's curious to learn it. But, of course, Kahaku, um, I, I guess, in a way, for forces himself on Fushi, which, um, uh, which gives uh, Fushi a negative reaction just due to the fact that he's in Perona's form. Yeah, he runs away and then he ends up throwing up. Yeah, and it gets worse from there once. Uh, uh, I, I guess Kahaku is saying that, you know, it doesn't matter what form Fushi takes. And yeah, it just gets even weird, weirder to the point where Fushi like literally tries to run. Uh, run away from Kahaku yeah. and you know try try to explain to Kahaku uh, about Perona herself like literally telling the whole story real full story of like what happened to Perona and uh, and what Haise did to her yeah and and this does kind of you know it'll like have Kahaku is kind of taken aback by this a little bit basically saying like you know oh I didn't know all that um but he was, you know, because he was saying earlier, like, oh, I'll just accept you however you are. But, you know, after Fushi tells him that, like, he it feels like he has to, like, re sort of reconsider. Um, but, yeah, Kahaku really does come off as, as really unhinged uh, with how obsessed he is with Fushi. But uh, you mentioned before the recording, and I kind of I, I kind of forgot about this little detail, but um, uh, Fushi's creator mentioning how, like, every, uh, like, every um, uh, member of what was it a high says clan or, or every like rein reincarnation of her has uh, the same obsession uh with fushi and uh, it's just funny how in the beginning of this of the season kahaku is saying he uh he's only interested in women but and then he says in this episode he, uh, he doesn't really care uh what fushi looks like uh he would still be in love with fushi yeah and and even after this like even after bon uh I guess set some ground rules to, you know, at, at least separate Fushi and Kaka Kahaku away from each other. Kahaku still, in a way, still has this love obsession with Fushi even after um, Fushi supposedly gets in trouble, uh, you know, by the, by the middle of this episode. Um, but you know, but what happens? Uh, but the biggest development in this episode is, uh, is of course Fushi getting captured due to the fact that um, that the church of Church has found out that Fushi is able to re resurrect people. Yeah, uh, and I, I, I'm kind of surprised that you know this, uh, this, this, the church that has been so like I, I guess they consider themselves like an anti-Fushi faction or something. Like they don't, they, they think Fushi is the devil. Uh, like I'm kind of surprised they haven't really, uh, you know, tried that hard to capture him uh, or kill him up until this point. Uh, even though Fushi's been around for so long. Yeah, and uh, of course, Fushi, like, he ends up getting, being captured by being tricked by uh, by a priestess of the church saying that Bon ba is going to be executed by the church for being associated with him. Yeah, well, and, and Bon actually, uh, yeah, he ends up selling out Fushi too because they, they basically, he remembers, that, like, the whole reason why he's, even trying to help Fushi is so is is for his own, uh, basically like for his own, uh, for his own gains essentially. Like so, he can become the king of uh, of his, uh, I guess of his king, the new king of his kingdom. Uh, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. of course he ends up helping out the uh, the church in uh, trying to apprehend Fushi. Yeah, and and of course um, Kahaku and Toto end up overhearing this conversation so Kahaku of course um, you know dis despite the fact that he's not allowed to go near Fushi um, 
you know, due to what happened earlier in the episode, he's still willing to help Fushi uh, be free of the church. And of course, Toto uh, tries to rile up the crowd who that support Fushi to no to help uh, free Fushi from being captive from from the church. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, uh, this leads to another scene in which uh, that that supposedly the church will reconsider Fushi's situation if they can somehow resurrect. Um, I don't know if it's like a priest or a leader of this town, but um, uh, I think it was one of but, their priests. You know, I yeah, I guess. Um, so Fushi tries to, I guess, in a way, try to resurrect this person, but unfortunately, it doesn't work because, um, uh, as Bond points out a little bit later in this episode, Fushi can, uh, I guess, only resurrect someone if he's interacted with them uh, while they were alive. Well, that's yeah. I mean, it's that's a theory of his, but I mean, I'm assuming it's probably correct, considering you know he failed to resurrect this person and only created just a lifeless shell, uh, kind of like with the uh, with the girl. But of course, it ended up working because I guess you know he he did interact with her in her final moments. Yeah, and and of course it worked. Of course, uh, you know Bond wanted to keep this a secret from. Uh, from Fushi due to selfish reasons, but of mm-hmm. course Fushi is up. Op- he's going to find out about this eventually, and I don't know what his opinion is uh, of Bond is going to be if he finds out like Bond's reasonings for, for hiding it in the first place. Yeah, my concern in terms of like where the plot is going to go, like when Fushi finds out he can do this, is I mean, what what's uh, I, I there are uh, supposedly I guess if Bond is correct, there are limitations to this ability. But when Fushi finds out about this, like, what's really going to stop him from going and uh, just resurrecting all the people in his life that were important to him that died? Uh, if he can just do that, because if the only limitation is that he had to have known the person while they were alive. Well, here, I, I mean, I have another thing about the whole resurrection plot. Mm-hmm. I mean, what some of the people had to have, to have died would want to be resurrected in the first place or i guess that's the only thing that would stop him is is he uh, okay so if if he resurrects them there's a possibility that will will they will they end up dying again if Hmm. he tries to resurrect them that that's another thing yeah uh or uh or, or with the people that that have been resurrected um have the same healing ability or be immortal like fushi is because uh, if I remember correctly, when he resurrected the the princess, um, uh, she she met she mentions during uh, her meeting with Bond that uh, her illness uh, suddenly disappeared as soon as she uh, got resurrected. So, so it's I, I don't know like how, it, unless like uh, if everyone you know if everybody uh, Fushi resurrects might become immortal or if they're just gonna end up being regular humans again. That would be kind of interesting if that were the case. Uh, if if people he resurrects become like him in a way yeah it's i don't know it's it's hard it's hard to say but um but as of right now because of uh fushi's failure to i guess resurrect this uh this old priest um uh this leads into me you know this leads into i guess uh mayhem uh, like uh i i guess by by the church or whatever the temple is and Toto ends up getting stabbed uh, through the chest with a sword. And I initially thought that she was dead until we find out that she's not. I, uh, I, I kind of wondered if she was, was when she got stabbed because there wasn't any blood. Uh, if you notice after yeah. she got stabbed. Yeah, yeah. I, I was a little bit curious about that. But we find out that uh, I think something she was sewing uh, prevent and it, the sword from piercing her chest. Mm-hmm. So, so what happened? Like, um, even though like she's uh, she's not dead, she's still trapped along with Bond. I guess it, like in a hanging cage over a canyon. Yeah, and uh, Fushi is also trapped in a, uh, in a well, not in a cage, but they put him into a um, a block of uh, I think it was a molten iron, and he can't really escape from it. Uh, like he tries to transform into Gugu. Uh, to try to create like some kind of opening, but it it doesn't really seem to do much of anything. Yeah, and you know of course he ends up running out of oxygen just due to the fact that he can't uh, he can't breathe any air in there mm-hmm. until <laughs> it's worse from there. Once uh, the church decides to pour molten metal over him, uh, which causes him to well, 
Oh, he doesn't. He can't die, uh, obviously. But he. I can only imagine how painful it is for him to just be constantly just being bathed in molten iron over and over, and then I, I guess healing through it at the same time. Yeah, it it gets really dark. I mean, the series has gotten dark before um but this was just uh, i mean this is pretty messed up like yeah he's just getting killed over and over again basically by having like molten iron poured into the uh into the block and just and him just getting yeah him just getting melted uh and dying over you know just constantly uh but uh yeah, yeah we also see that apparently i guess kaku may be trying to uh plan something to save fushi from from uh, the end, from this block he's stuck in. Um, yeah, but but of course they can't get him out. Yeah, and until they totally try, I guess the church managed to get that entire block out. Um, I don't know how heavy that thing was. I mean, it's. It, I mean, I mean, they, they of course they they take the entire iron block out and then show it off to the populace. You know, half of which are anti Fushi and half of which support Fushi. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, the last thing we see is, of course, um, Fushi's creator coming out saying, I don't know what, what he was saying. Like, he, he's just counting down to a number or something. And then we just oh, see uh, I, someone's eye open. Yeah, I think that was, I mean, I'm guessing that's Fushi. But yeah, I mean, I'm guessing he's just counting, like, uh, because of, like, I guess it's just, just supposed to imply how long they've been in there or something. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like I, I will say, I'm kind of surprised that like the the the, the church hasn't really tried to uh, try to try to do anything to Fushi until now. I mean, Fushi's just kind of been walking around out in the open. I mean, he hasn't really been going to any great effort to really kind of like hide himself over all these, uh, you know, and all the years he's been alive. Um, I, I forget exactly. There was some line he said in this episode. Like, if Fuji just, I, I guess in general, like, he, he still, like, comes off as fair, as pretty naive about a lot of things, I guess. Um, even though, like, he, he's supposed to have been immortal and he's supposed to have lived so much, so long, like, hundreds of years. And it still just seems like he's, you know, he, he, just, there's a lot of things he just doesn't really pick up on or just doesn't know. Um, and, and, and I guess that's just the general criticism of, of his character in this season. Uh, is you know it's kind of unbelievable after all this time he's been living he still is uh he, he does it doesn't really seem like he has been alive for that long um and also the whole thing with the uh with the church like not it hasn't really been until this point where they uh, they've tried to kill fushi or they've tried to capture him or anything like that uh, yeah i mean the, the fact that i think fushi if i were to calculate correctly i think fushi would would have interacted with society for at least three centuries yeah about now well we, we see um, him doing that in the uh in the montage the, uh, after they do that time skip uh, in the beginning of season two um so we know he that he has been um yeah i mean we, we don't know how many other people uh fushi's been er interacting with yeah. uh during during that i guess you could say it's a 200 year time skip but it's yeah it's it's still the thing about um fushi's naivety that it's kind of his downfall for what happened to him in this episode. I mean, the only time when, in which he's uh, a little bit hesitant to trust someone is, uh, you know, descendants of uh, of Hayase's fam, oh, I, I guess, uh, family line or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought that it, this episode wasn't quite as, as uh, I, I don't know, like I thought it was a little bit better than the other ones just because it actually, it actually has progress the plot a little bit and uh i guess kind of introduce the new villain if you want to consider the the church i mean i guess you know you could say they have been villains but they haven't really done anything up until now um but i i feel like pacing has just been a really big problem with the season so far though because it's taken up until this episode for something to start you know for things to start happening i guess um uh but yeah i mean it was just okay though it's it hasn't really improved too much in my opinion i'm I, I still like have some fairly mixed feelings about uh how the season is progressing so far um yeah it, it got off to a really slow start yeah. in my opinion uh i mean it, of course the one major development is of course uh tonari dying uh in the second episode mm -hmm. then it just got in nails pace um uh with i i guess with the whole interaction between fushi and kahaku for the last 
uh, and and Bond in the last three episodes until they finally pick things up in this episode with the church being involved now. Yeah, that's kind of been another um, problem with this season is just the characters, the new characters that have been introduced, uh, like Bond and Kahaku. Like, Kahaku is okay at first, but then he just started to get really annoying, and especially in this episode. And Bond, ever since he was introduced, has been annoying, even though they try to kind of flesh out his character a little bit. Um, but he, he just hasn't stopped being just a really obnoxious character, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. But... Yeah, that's just been another issue with the seasons. Uh, is that all the all the new characters? I, I really just don't care about, and I, I mean, unless they they uh, there is something interesting that happens with them later on, I I don't think my opinion is really going to change on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're still like only what a quarter of the season yeah. uh, so far. So, I mean, hopefully things will at, at least start picking up um, later and. I can expect another time skip after this um, particular arc because I, I feel like you know we're near the end of this uh, particular arc uh, involving Kahaku and Bon, and I would assume that Fushi will move will move on to uh, another area, possibly through another time skip and interact with somebody else later. Yeah, I'm guessing it'll probably be like the first season in that sense. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't really have too much else to say about the episode. I don't know if you have anything else to say about it. It's better. Uh, that's pretty much all I can say. It's it's a be- it's better than what we've uh, had to watch in the last three weeks mm-hmm. so far. Yeah, I mean, hopefully it does continue to get better. Um, that, that's all I can hope for is that you know maybe as the season progresses, it, it does start to get better. Uh, so I, I don't know, but it, yeah, that that all being said, guys. Um, until next time, we will see you all later. <laughs>